Ladies and gentlemen, a Kingwin Pro League 2015, we're just done with Strive Crow and Xixo. We're going to be moving on to RD versus Arena, a match that is going to be, uh, I wouldn't say a grudge match, really. Not so much a grudge match as much as salt uh, match. one that pits a salt match, really. That That's pretty much what it is, if anything. Not so much a grudge one. So, do we have the lineups of the players at the moment or not yet? I don't think we, we've been given them so far. Well, I don't know. Like... Both players are are are, are kind of hating each other publicly, but yeah. I don't think they're they're really so hateful against each other in real life. That's at least my opinion. Yeah, I mean, the either way, like people who play Hearthstone just want to have fun. You heard it here first. A lot of the pros when they meet up in like in in real life, they tend to be uh, very friendly with one another, unless you know I'm not aware of that. Every time I've seen. Uh, the, the time that I've seen people meet up, even though they might have had a grudge in the past, that tends to just go away. Because after all, it's a card game and you tend to just want to have fun. Um, you know, people who play games in general, video games especially, it's a very tightly knit community and Hearthstone is, you know, somewhat casual friendly, so it's not a game you that you go hyper competitive so. yes. in. The, the, the adrenaline doesn't spike up as high as something like StarCraft 2 or League of Legends while you're or playing a game. Or Counter-Strike, when you shoot yeah. someone in the head and he takes it personally, you know? Yeah, he's like, why are you shooting me in the head, bro? Like, what's wrong yeah. with you? What's wrong with you? All right, so RDU versus Reyna. We have Rogue Mage Shaman for RDU. Reyna is going to be playing Hunter, Paladin, Druid. None of the players is, you know, uh, the players' classes are overlapping. So they're all bringing a completely unique lineup. And I'm trying to figure out here what they might have been bringing. Reyna, I would suspect, is bringing Faith Hunter. Um, I mean, that so. is the Hunter deck that we've just been seeing dominate everything. Uh, RDU's got Rogue Mage Shaman. Is that lineup? I mean, Rogue gets punished by Face Hunter fairly well. Uh, Shaman as well, typically, unless he's running something fancy. Mage, depending I, I, on the mage, could I'm also lose the, to it. The whole lineup, you know, and yeah, yeah, the big, the bigger picture, and yeah, I really the bigger picture, and when you take it apart, like the, the, each each of the deck, right? Yep. Because Shaman and Mage can be two different archetypes. Yeah, they the could be Freeze or yeah, so Mech mid-range, depending. How much does it make sense to play Freeze Mage with Aggressive Shaman in the same lineup? What do well, you what's, think? The pro what's the problem with doing that? I mean, you're not targeting the same deck. This is Conquest. So you'd have mm -hmm, to play mm -hmm. decks that are quote-unquote similar to target something specific. But the question becomes, what is RDU targeting? Perhaps he's targeting Druid. Since he knows that Reynad acknowledges Druid as being one of the most overall strong classes when the metagame is shifting. I know that Reynad has made that statement multiple times. It's very good at punishing bad starts yeah, and also so very good at punishing unstable metas. If he does that and he targets Druids, then he plays Mech Mage and Aggressive Shaman. Yeah, Magro Shaman, Mech Mage, yeah. and Rogue seem like they would be uh, quite a good, uh, you know, quite a good lineup here if he's targeting Druid specifically. But I'm still not convinced about the Rogue Druid matchup though. We had so much discussions That's about right. it. It's like much, uh, it's against much faster. Druid, yeah. Druid against Priest. Some people are saying that Priest is favored against the Druid. I'm like, huh? what? And um, Priest is favored against Druid? Maybe for Colento, but that's about it. <laughs> that's that's uh, maybe like a one-player metagame call, but besides that, I don't know. It's not something I've seen very frequently, honestly. Yeah, well... The, it's the same like when you play against Handlock. If the Handlock the Twilight Drake, and if the priest gets injured by right. Master Circle, it's basically the same situation, but you can't silence it. it. That's the big difference. But, but the you priest know, and the mirror match. Two cards and not exactly. One. exactly. So it, it, it balances way, it, out. It balances like... out. So I would say, I, I still would say, priest doesn't have the upper hand against Druid, but most people that I was talking to at Seed Story Cup disagreed with me. And then right. it was the, the second, you know, um, camp that was agreeing with me, so... I guess uh, people have polarized yeah. opinions. I think it all comes down to your thoughts still RNG. If you've had good thoughts still experience in the past, you think Priest is favored against everything. And then if you have bad yeah. thoughts still RNG, then you're like, well, you know what? Priest is pretty weak against specific classes. That being said, RDU will be starting with his mage versus Reynad's hunter. Um, do we we have to expect face hunter from Reynad, should we? Well... Reynard is known for using decks that aren't maybe that... How do I say that with not sounding... Um, watch out, watch out. Yeah. Hmm. 
Choose I your words carefully here. <laughs> not with cards not commonly used. All right. So, it's an unusual card. The Temple Storm is known for that by default. Yeah, they always one step ahead. So they're always, and yeah. sometimes the one step ahead is one step back backwards. So, All right, Reddit, you're watching. Uh, yeah, so I mean, they they are original, for to say the least. We've talked about that. Raynad and Gara are deck builders. Um, as players, I think they yeah, like to yeah. tweak decks to their liking. Um, you know, just going to the Flood Mage from Raynad, the early Zoo versions, the Agro Warrior that was built a while back. Those always existed, but he popularized them and refined some of his own versions. There was also the um, Windspeaker Shaman at one event at some point that I remember seeing. So he definitely does bring his own. At the very least, his own twist to exist mm -hmm. decks, if not completely new archetypes. So yeah, Temple Storm is, in fact, um, pretty innovative on that regard. So, do you think there's going to be a tweak to Hunter as a result? Since that was, I was, uh, I was asking whether or not it was going to be face. I think if Reynard will learn from his mistakes, uh, from the past mistakes, he will bring the most popular deck, which is the most powerful. So I would say, face Hunter will be present uh, in Reynard's uh, Reynard's lineup. But if he values the surprise factor more still, then he might go with something really weird. And I really don't want to make any odds. He, he can go both ways here. Yeah. Death Star was playing a mech hunter on ladder. Man, and... did you see... I'm sorry that I interrupted you. Go ahead, go ahead. You, go did ahead. you see what Toida was playing at Seed Story Cup? Yes, I did. The Fang Death Hunter. Toida, what is that deck? Well, it was a nice nice idea because everyone had that idea yeah. when they saw Fate, Fate Death, but this deck just lacked the finishing touch, like the last last bang on the, with the hammer to the, you know, to, um, to the nail, to the nail yeah. to the coffin, and that was the problem with that deck. It was really entertaining to watch and to cast that, but to play it, it had to be super, it, it feels... super, like, enraging for the player because you yeah. always lacked that that, that one little card and um, the other problem was that Toida was 4-0 with his other decks and 0-6 with, with, the with that one yeah it's, it's like uh... that, that just sucks you know oh look at that are you playing freeze mage all right so freeze mage versus face hunter if ice barrier is found very early this is a lot easier for the mage if there is no ice barrier however the in the story is a bit different but it is Face Hunter from Reynad. There may be text, but they're not going to be uh, massive variants since the deck has been refined a lot over the past few months. Well, it has. It's, the Emperor is just a big upgrade to the whole deck. It's like yeah, for Freeze Mage, but I mean, face, face Hunter, I don't oh, think. Oh, sorry, I didn't understand. Um, yeah, I was uh, speaking of Reynad's deck. I mean, if he's made tweaks, they're not going to be major, I don't think. Well, we see these staple cards for now. Mm-hmm. And Maybe he just... plays Gladiator's Longbow. You know, 7 mana, 10 damage, that's a Pyroblast. It, do... <laughs> it doesn't King play Crush. around Explosive Trap, you know? You... Right. It really doesn't. You die from the Explosive Trap. When I you know. Longbow. It's... That's I infuriating. That. We should make a petition, Lothar. Fix that. Blizzard, please flix. Please flix. Blizzard, please flix. All right, so double abusive sergeant is played. Wow, this is uh, so much damage. Yeah, incredible. Get in there and fight. But but I'm gonna die. Fight anyway. Put uh, me in your deck, maggot. <laughs> you think that works? Do you think that's how they ended up in Face Hunter? I I think so. <laughs> <laughs> Face Hunter was like, "What do I put in here?" And then he hovered over the card and he just screamed, "No, he put he me in your popped. deck, maggot." He just oh, yeah. popped from the other other side of the of the of the card, you know. He, he okay, just... right, yeah. <laughs> he was about you were about to add King Crush, and then that card came out instead, and then everybody yeah. started running two abusive sergeants as a result, which I don't blame them for. But what's, oh, what's wow. fun is that um, the uh, art of the abusive sergeant was used as an item art for World of Warcraft TCG. That was Giant's oh. Girdle. There's a lot of that stuff in. Hearthstone. Like, I have to go through so much art because of Megator's Workshop. I see all the cards from Hearthstone and where they came from. I should compile the album one day. Yeah, you it should. It's pretty nice. Well, I would say that Misha was pretty good for Reynad. Hmm? Well, Allowed him uh... to protect the second uh, Maggot. 
isn't wouldn't be just fa um, face <laughs> wouldn't be <he> just <laughs> hopper better and i thought they fixed it like blizzard fixed it that the other creatures from the companion are a bug and you always get yeah fixed. you always get hopper i think they fixed that bug in a recent patch 404 or hopper yeah <laughs> 404 like face not found and then you have 404 <laughs> huffer not found what's happening here i i think my hunter class is glitched what? well the boot hoarder is gonna die why would you trade for that i i don't know maybe to protect misha i wouldn't be too surprised if he you traded can't... once you but can't not with protect both. your creature i think oh i think you protect one of them maybe not the both of them though but one of them i'm okay with I'm not sure about that. I would just go face. Like the you're you're a real hunter, man. You you know your stuff. Yeah, I know my stuff. I just beat the face of my opponent with yeah. creatures and with your, with your opponent, you just take the opponent and you smash oh, it all through. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but that no works too. That works too. <laughs> That's an alternative win condition. Just take your opponent and smash it into his own face. <laughs> that seems to work. You and know then how, you can spam his bow, emotes on top. You know how the bow, bow works. Because you see the animation, right? He just takes yeah. the bow in his hands, just <laughs> walks to the opponent and just bashes the, the head of the, <laughs> of the, of the opposing yeah. hero. It it's doesn't just... say eagle horn arrows, right? It's yeah. just eagle horn bow. Like, it's yeah. just you just take the bow and you smack the face. That's how you yeah, do that it. That makes a lot that, of sense. That's the vibe you have to have with, yeah. um, with the face hunter. Otherwise, it's no fun at all. Yeah, that's right. Well, we'll see what he does here with this. He pings the maggot, and then he plays Ice Barrier. You know what? He found two Ice Barriers. I want to point that out, because who, who was it that mentioned that when you get two Ice Barriers, the matchup suddenly becomes a lot more manageable, and it's hard to lose That's even? True. Well, I would say Freeze Mage is kind of favorite in this matchup after uh, Hunter stopped using Flares. Yep. Yeah, once that got cut out, they really improved their line, their matchup. And the ice barriers really make a difference. The problem is that RDU has to hard cast them for three instead of giving them through Mad Scientist. Hmm. Well, steady shot. That's still not a problem. I would say the problem is the fact that he doesn't have Alexstrasza yet. Yeah, because he will need to either heal with it or kill his opponent eventually. That's not a bad top deck. Yeah, definitely. So do you just play Acolyte, Frostbolt, or Frostbolt, Ping, and play Acolyte late? I would late? say Frostbolt, Ping. You don't want to get more damage from that. No, man. Golden Vogan. Wait, Raynet has a fully golden hunter, golden... Like, this is, like, full gold. Oh! I, he I like that. that okay. I, yeah. I wasn't thinking about that, but Arduino is better at, at the Freeze Mage than me. That's a great play, though, if I have to be honest. Oh, so, you, so you got two shots. You had, I guess, two ideas with that owl. You either silence your own Misha to hit face for four, or you silence the Acolyte to deny card draw, which is potentially much better. It's just that this Misha is likely, in your head, to die very soon. Yeah, but I think the abusive owl, double abusive owl, is better than silence right. Acolyte. I science acolyte, yeah. I, in this specific case, since you've seen one ice barrier and no block is up, you might want to rush as soon as possible. Well, it's still so far away from the Alexstrasza, so you're not um, overly you, worried. Yeah, yeah, overly worried about <laughs> the fact that you can die. So I would say with two charred creatures in your hand, you're most likely will play the owl. For plus four attack. I think so too. I think that's what makes the most sense because it is effectively acting as a two mana kill command in this position. Yeah. Oh, and he does it. Yep. No surprise there. So he broke here. the shield. Oh, he knows. What are you going to do without a taunt against this aggressive board? And uh, the. He didn't play the explosive trap. What? Because if Why? Mad Scientist is played, then Acolyte attacks into it. Mad Scientist pops, gets the secret for free. That's but it. if you draw quick shot, yeah, uh, I mean I think it's not worth risking a possible free ice block. Uh, I would say I would still play it, but that's me. I'm the face hunter of you know using mana efficiently and just going face with everything. 
All right, so RD decides to ping the Misha and keep the Acolyte. I thought he would ping his Acolyte and attack with the Acolyte into Misha. I would, I would play the Ice Barrier this turn. Because instead of doing anything yeah, else, yeah, in, instead of pinging the Misha, you know, because he had one mana over, uh, uh, he had his one mana being not spent, right? So he had he did use that for the hero power. And he has the first Nova, so that Misha wasn't really so important, in my opinion. You have to play the Ice Bear as soon as possible, and now you die to a single kill command hero power with a beast. Yeah, unless you find Ice Block off the top, but that's it. Yeah. You you could kill your own Mad Scientist to get the Ice Block out. If you Alex oh, Raza. Wow. Oh, wow. This is close. If a kill command is found, this is game, right? Yeah. Well, Actually, unless he quick, blocks the ice block, which... Quick shot would do it. Yeah, it depends on what uh, Raynat thinks the secret Leper is. Gnome. Well, he's gonna have to play everything he's got and hope there's no Alex. Will you keep the Unleash the Hound? I think you have to keep it because you have no beasts and you will draw no, one no, card. No, I agree. I agree. You have to keep it. Well, now he knows there's no ice block. And that was a slight misplay by Raynat here with using the hero power first. Well, he wanted to use hero power to make sure that uh, if it was ice block, it would leave his opponent as low on health as possible. So I think but he was you... playing for ice block. That well, was okay, okay. But I was thinking was like, if experience. you play the leper gnome anyway, right? You could kill with the... Uh... Wait, he could have actually just pinged face and played leper. But then yeah. Ashraza would have been a problem. Oh, that would have actually been pretty nice yeah just like a hero power face a leper gnome and leave it at that mm -hmm. let the opponent figure his way out of it yeah that would be really nice now it's no reason to play the leper gnome i think yeah no, not this turn i don't think well that's the that's gonna be the fastest alex Charles i've ever seen plus a good ice lens to make sure the health gets stable and now RDU is looking at a possible comeback with the Frostbolt Nine. and the Pyroblast. You got 19 with Pyroblast, you still lack the Ice Block. But that's not a big problem, I think. No, I think you can Nova, Frostbolt, Attack Phase, then Pyroblast. Oh, he even sacrificed one point of damage. I didn't like that at all, to be honest. I think it was weird. Not sure what that accomplished, because it was going to make the trade anyway. Yeah. Maybe it's to save the Leper. Well, he, he would sacrifice for the Leper, but then... You have two beasts instead of one. And still you dealt one point of damage with, um, you know, uh, with the beast. Instead of the one attack of the Leper Gnome would be sacrificed. And well, you will push two points of damage for the Leper Gnome, so... Unless Raynad finds a miracle off the top here, I don't think this... Oh, he finds a oh, quick wow. shot! Quick right. shot? There is, there's an explosive draw. trap set up. Oh, that's not gonna help. Yeah, this is GG, right? Yep, it is GG. Yeah. The attack first with the Falnos, so you trigger the freezing trap. What if it's one. misdirection? Then you, okay, still you have to you still attack with Thanos first, anyway, yeah, so it doesn't first matter. Damn and it. you will not fall for that. <laughs> you know, that would be funny though. We saw a uh, hyped recently make a huge misplay in a freezing trap. What that was, was a big that? problem. Oh, it was, I think, last time I cast it with Monk, perhaps, I think, hyped to make it a, a blunder as far as triggering trap orders, and he ended up checking really wrongly. He could have won the game if he checked properly. Oh, that really? lost him the game. As Raynad is going to lose this okay. to Freeze Mage. No Ice Block necessary. Ice Barrier really makes this matchup a lot more bearable. That This Ice Barrier was really important. So All right. Well, what's the hmm. what's the next matchup you think they're gonna go for? Because we have like Hunter's been been one with for Raynad. He's got Paladin and Druid. So what's the next deck you will go for in this position? I'm thinking. I'm thinking. I mean, Hunter is already out. So Paladin, Paladin is good all round. You lose to Rogue, typically speaking. I think um, you still freeze go... Mage as well. I think you still go. Oh wait, with Mage, Mage is out. Never mind. Sorry about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Raynad has a hunter left. Never mind. I, I miss uh miss yeah, whoever. We always do that. But I, I think Raynad should stick to the hunter anyway. I'm not sure about RDU, it doesn't make a difference, I think. Which which deck you pick. Yeah. 
It's still very early anyway. Reynard's gonna stick to his hunter and RD is gonna go shaman. Yeah. Yeah, Unleash the Hound is really pretty strong against Shaman if they overextend at all. And you can, they, they typically don't have too much healing. Typically, you would say. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I mean, I mean you, Vitality Totem off of Powder Shredders, perhaps, but that's about it. Uh, if you see that's that true. at all, which does happen, you know. It, it happened at Seed Story Cup and actually when I know. we broke the game because yeah. it healed like 16 points of life. Was it was it orange that got that with double vitality? No, what? I think it was Ostaka. Ostaka, all right, yeah. Anyway, there was a, a bit of totem action going on there, so I, I guess anti kill bot is still played in shaman, just not overly so. Uh, you'll see a one of fairly often. <laughs> What's up? Uh, I just saw the chat being chatted about face, bow face. <laughs> Oh, the boat of the face? Yeah, yeah, that's the way you go. All right, so it's going to be face hunter versus face shaman. Which is favored for the face hunter? I would say. Uh, you know what? This is a matchup I am a little unsure about. I'd, I'd venture to say... What about what drawing three weapons? Yeah, well, that changes everything. The power mace is just really good with the whirling zapomatic. In this matchup, but ultimately Reynard finds his bow first, and that's going to be a bit of a problem for RDU. Yeah, that's a big How issue. How to put anything on the board with a hand with three weapons? Like, what do you punch? Minions or face? There's no point in killing. Oh, that's a good draw. Yeah, follow up turn is going to be really sick. Two two max at the same time. One of them is going to get the plus two plus two that you want. Well, it will get silenced, so this sucks. Animal companion. If it's Misha, oh wow! I am so sorry for you, RDU. <laughs> this, <laughs> this is not the beast you wanted to see. Yeah, definitely. That didn't quite hit the face. So you have to drop both creatures now. I would say. Or just um, Whirling Zapomatic and Hero Power. So you attack Misha with your face, and then you play Noetron, so it dies. Ooh. This is so much damage. And now it dies to the Misha. Ah, oh, this sucks. Because you use the Owl to silence the Nautron. Yeah, yeah. He has and to you hoot, trade hoot, the Misha. Hoot. And you still have two points of mana which can be used on the Hero Power. Or just play the Vulcan because you have Glaive Zucker on next turn and the Eyes of Surgeon. So even if there will be like a 5 HP minion, you can play Abusive Surgeon. Yeah, you can still play it. You, you'd still yeah. be okay with that. Yeah, I think uh, the sounds play is a really solid one. I would say so. Well, do you play the abusive to be able to you know, deal with the totems more effectively? I guess so, yes. He doesn't opt for the damage. He's already got a health lead. And it's being incredibly difficult here for RDU to handle this. I don't think you can win this game anymore. Well, we might be able to find something, but... I don't know, I mean, just Glaive Zuko alone is enough to be a problem, and Animal Companion adds on top of that to be even what more the, problematic. What about the Hounds? It's a problem too. Oh wow, Nalio is actually relevant here. It allows SM to... work. Yeah, a lot to keep the one the damage. Yeah. Yeah. Well, this is probably this gonna This is happen. a nice drop, but you can't drop the Nitron right now, but you have the Fire Mantle, which wouldn't be... You wouldn't be able to play it for two turns. I think you have to keep this, right? Yeah. Oh, wow. Wow. Oh. Look Four, at this six, damage eight. output. This is two points of life remaining. Yeah, he's dead next turn unless he finds some kind of healing, which I don't think he runs in that deck. I don't think so either. Well, well it's a mech mage and you can play healbot. You can't even... Well, I guess you fan, could attack sorry. him in. 
All right, so Reyna takes the second game, so he's going to steal the game uh, with his face hunter. He lost the first one to Mage. He's going to win the second one against Shaman. So RD will have to replay his Shaman at some point in the future. So Reyna is now actually down to Paladin Druid, which I'm curious to see what he's going to go with. Paladin is typically okay against Shaman, but fairly uh, difficult to play against Rogue, right? Whereas Druid mm -hmm. tends yeah. to do equally... I mean, if it's a slower Druid with, like, you know, a lot of taunts... Um, I feel like Rogue has a chance, but against Fast Druid, Dru like the Druid just can snowball out of control. With the ad addition of Emperor, it makes everything so much worse. Well, it can be the, uh, I mean, the Paladin can be an aggro Paladin and just right. smash everything face. You know? Reynard would bring that. Yeah, Savish would bring that, so why Reynard wouldn't yeah. bring that, right? Uh, it's a Paladin that uses as everything to the face. Like, you can yeah. even use this, the other side of the of the sword and just hit face with it. Yeah. I'm just curious to see if Reynad is the kind of player who will bring uh, Aggro Pally. I, I don't even think he'd have a problem with it. Like, he, he'd probably be open to the idea, at the very least. I would um, say so. You, you, yeah. you also, when you play Aggro Paladin and your opponent notices it, because you drop a creature turn 1 or turn 2, then he changes the whole lineup. Uh, yeah. The whole line of plays that he will usually go. He is so worried about Divine Favor we played on like turn four, right? When you can just draw like six cards of five for three points of mana, it's insane. You have to bo yeah. you have to get those preparations and just go with a huge advent or um, use the preps for nothing, basically. D dump your hand as fast as possible because yeah. if they do get a really good divine favor, you're gonna fall behind. But the upside to it is that rogues have the tool with, you know, backstab, SI, fan of knives, they're still running it. I've seen a lot of people cut fans of knives nowadays. Um, you know, the blade flurries are there to deal with a smaller board. And mm -hmm. if hobgoblin's mm -hmm. not found, if it, assuming it is a hobgoblin pally, yeah. then, you know, it's really tough for the paladin to get a really solid mid game. Um, he needs to get that stuff in the, in the mid game to, you know, get a really, a really solid edge on the board. Otherwise, it's going to be problematic. True. All right, so we'll have to see. Uh, it's going to be RDU Rogue versus Reyna Druid. So this is a matchup that I'm curious to see how it's going to develop. You said it was not favored for the Rogue, unless I'm mistaken. Well, I would say it's 50-50. People okay. are saying that the Rogue is favored, but I, I, I would say it's still 50-50. All right. That's a, that's a, I guess, different opinion than I've got. I think... Druid, if it's playing fast, generally has a slight edge, but it could come down to like the way people play the decks, really, because each player has a specific play style. Like, mulli like Rogue typically has a very similar mulligan, but we've seen some players wildly like pick at their mulligan wildly differently, um, even with the same decks. Like Oral Rogue is a deck that I think most people have uh, a very similar mulligan, and then. Mm -hmm. Uh, I remember about five to six players from the, the entire list of the pros that were playing that deck had a very different approach to mulliganing with that one, so well, it might would, come down to playstyle. I would keep every single minion I have in my hand against a druid. Like, apart from the five drops, but three drops and four drops are, are something you have to get, and deadly poison and blade flurry. But the blade flurry is not, um, is not needed in the opening hand, though. But you need needed in the game that's for sure yeah all right so we see reynad's hand it looks like a typical fast druid um with a slight anti-aggro touch with the zombie chow although i don't even know if i want to say it's an anti-aggro touch it's really just fairly standard honestly at this point hmm interesting there's a violet teacher in rdu's druid backstab si for rdu rdu's playing uh, rogue by the way this is Reyna playing Druid. Alright, so backstab the zombie Chow, remove the board presence, force Reyna to hero power. That's that's okay. Is, that's still yeah, okay because he didn't be have the yeah, he didn't have the wild growth, so he's okay with that. Yeah, in certain circumstances this is a bit annoying, but in this one it's a non issue. Is he gonna bluff the thinking? He's gonna bluff the thinking. Wow. Yeah, that's like deep. you actually need to think to think in Hearthstone, right? Yeah, like you pretty yeah, exactly, right? Like <laughs> what's what's playing Hearthstone and how do you think? <laughs> uh, 
Yeah, so he's thinking, like, do I bluff him and pretend like I've got wild growth and wait? And now, or do you might think, oh, maybe he does have it. Um, but he doesn't. Sprint is being drawn. That's important when you will draw the, the prep, but for now it sucks. The light shot burn you. Having two free mana creatures is really important against Droid because his only answer is Ravs, basically. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that or much later on, he can actually weave in uh, Keeper of the Grove with Hero Power, but that's not before turn six. All right, so how do you deal with this if you are DU? Hmm. I think you have to let it live to get a really good uh, Fan of Knives of this raid next turn. I would agree. Next turn you use Fan of Knives at this rate. If no Lotha, but we know there is one. But next turn is 4 mana for Raynaud. Yep. Now it's going to be a good play for RD on the follow-up turn. It's going to yeah. be really good. Yeah, so you just drop Agent, I think? You might or keep the Ring. second... I, I think you might keep the second Farce here. Okay. Because you, you played one already, already, so the second one, the second one is much more important. If you don't play, of course, a healbot in this deck. I yeah. don't know the exact list, so it's hard to say which one is better in this situation. If you don't have a healbot, I would say it's better to play the the agent, because you won't, you won't be able to combo the agent until turn 6. I think double Farseer really plays into the you know hunter heavy metagame that we've been seeing around the... Mm -hmm. The game recently, so I wouldn't be surprised if he's actually running a heal bot and two farseers as well. All right, so there is room for him to remove one of the farseers of the Violet Teacher. No spells to be played, not really here at least. Now the question is whether or not you play the uh, the BGH perhaps as a straight up body on the back of this or Keeper of the Grove. I think Keeper I like, is okay. I like both, honestly. I think Keeper is okay because um, Rogue doesn't have any weapon weapon buffs yet. We would have seen yeah. that already. Like You've seen one poison. backstab, so I guess you could play BGH. Like, that's the thing. Because of the one oh, backstab you story. saw. Okay. Uh, Eviscerate SI looks good. Yeah, that's really great. Perfect, board clear. So, Achievement unlocked. Keeping the, the agent was crucial here. I would make the mistake. So good to start you here. And Lotheb is going to help a lot in this position. Because there's nothing RDU can do besides trading away his minions. If he wants to get rid of it at all. Oh. Oh, that's a quite a dead turn. Although, you know what? It's not even that bad because you just go full face and then yes, you get a good yes, later on. Yes, yes, you do. It's, it's bad, but it's, you know, not the worst. Now it's Toshli time. What does he even say when he comes in? I don't even know. And you kill one of the creatures, I think. Do you just set up lethal with a savage roar? <laughs> I don't think you can let those guys. How can live. you? What? What? How can you? Set up oh, over the next few turns, you got a shade, then you have two, uh, two savage roars. I wonder okay, if he you... wants to play aggressively or not. I thought you mean like next turn. I was like, what? How the hell is that even possible? Two savage roars with two creatures, twelve points of damage. RDU is wondering what's happening, and he's got to pin his opponent on some kind of funky combo, innervate, savage war play. But he's not gonna fall for it. No, he, he just goes Lothab. face with everything. He found Lothab, that really gives him peace of mind that he otherwise might not have. And now Raynad has to answer to this board. Swipe is locked. It's manageable, though. You got Keeper plus Hero Power to kill everything. You're fine. Oh man, this this deadly poison is going to be well um, um, deadly. Well, you... <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was like, where am I going with this? I guess there's only one adjective I'm looking for. He didn't kill the agent. Interesting. He doesn't. He doesn't see the lethal coming out because of the lines of played RD might have taken, but uh, uh, he, he's gonna be RD right was here. Going, in this RD was going all face. Why wouldn't you anticipate a tinkers? I think the the play that he wants to make to win here is to win with double Savage Ore. He's trying to play for the win as opposed to anything else. Double Agent. So trade and Blade Flurry your dagger away? I would say so. 
Yeah, it, it keeps you safe, right? And then you can play the second SI. Well, um, what well, about not killing Sylvanas? I'm just going free for phase. You have the... Honestly, I'm okay with that. Like, you just deadly go phase, then flurry, even. You, you deal 9 points of damage, right? Yeah. So, he's at 2. He's playing very safe here. RDU is playing super safe. I think Reynad, like, the fact that he went face with that Lothab early on represents something that RDU has to think is was very, much very better. Expensive. RDU, RDU's place was played much better than what we suspected in this situation. Uh, well, that was the play that we thought of at first, I think. The Blade Flurry into SI? Yeah. That was the first play that, that we saw. So I'm curious to see, though, if Reynad's gonna just heal up and taunt up his 5-5. Five -five. He hasn't seen a sap yet. Mm -hmm. And there's a sprint in the sap? That would be cool. It's very likely to happen, too. Like, sap being drawn off a of sprint is very likely. We haven't seen a single one yet. And when that goes for the heal, and he taunts out the 5-5. Five -five. If no sap is found, this could be a bit annoying. But I think Rogue has more than enough tools in this oh, deck. And there's the sap. How convenient. Uh, I think you still sprint. Yeah, sprint sap seems fine. I mean, you're bound to find the second eviscerate soon, and then you can or tinkers, then you can oh, dagger up deadly. What tinkers. about violet teacher sap, weapon up, deadly poison? I think that's better. You force your opponent to play swipe. Yeah, and use his face to trade or have double swipe or. Yeah, that's way better than just sprint. Why is he thinking about that? Well, Reyna has to need to find a second swipe here, right? Yes. He's... That's his only out, I think. And he's still not in a great position. I mean, he's got Wrath. I mean, he's got Keeper of the Grove with swipe, which helps a bit, but... He's one man off of getting it done. So if you swipe now, and I, I actually see the left, left card. Do you see it? The leftmost card? Yes, Keeper of the Grove. Oh, That's Keeper of the Grove. Okay. So I think maybe you just shade and hero power and go face. If you live, because there's only six damage on the board, then you're you know pretty fine. But RDU is going to be able to sprint here and likely find another bit of damage. He doesn't need much. He needs you know, one of his... He's already seen one of his rays, so there's a second one. The Tinkers would do oh, it, tinkers. and... Well, there it is. Bing! And you Rest didn't need to get the 1 to third, 1 to 3 chance on your minion. Yeah, just needed the, the buffs on the dagger here instead of the one that uh, that was gone with uh, 6 0 last game. So RDU is going to take a second game here over Reynad. So Reynad will be able to reuse his druid, and RDU is down to one deck. I think he's got his mech shaman left. Uh, yes, that's true. I was just looking at the lineups here. So Rogue and Mage are ticked off. Shaman mm -hmm. is being left. And Reynard has still his um, Paladin. Yeah, Paladin deck. That's not and terrible Druid. against Shaman, I'd say. So if you, if it comes down to that, it may be the case that Reynard's going to be able to take it with Pally. Uh, Mech Shaman's a bit trickier if they do get a good start and you're not able to stop them. But generally speaking, because of the way Consecration operates, you can typically take out all the smaller minions. The problem occurs when Power Mace gives something like a um, Whirling's Appomatic, the ability to attack you for 10, and then you don't have a True Silver to answer it or an Aldor. It it can be really painful. <laughs> That's awful. <laughs> That's awful to deal with. But yeah, when you think about the matchup against the uh, Druid, it's even worse. I would I would say. Yeah, typically, because it plays a bit like Zoo, right? And that's one of the, you know, known weaknesses of that specific deck. So, we'll have to see. So, right now, it's going to be going for Paladin versus RDU's only remaining deck, Shaman. So we'll have to see whether or not the Paladin can take this game. Otherwise, it's going to have to be the Druid. And that is not something Reynad wants to throw himself into, necessarily. Players are currently getting ready, so we'll see what kind of Paladin, you know, Reynad brought. We were talking earlier about the different archetypes. There's a mid-range Pally, there's a heavy controlled Pally, there's also the aggro one nowadays. But very few players have been toying around with it. Hmm. Well, I would it's say... Like Ceviche, I think, right? 
Only Savic really plays Agropelli. Yeah, he does. But I, I would say Rand will not bring that. Most likely. Yeah. It's wants... very. It's more of a. It's really Savic's deck, really. If anything, uh, we we haven't seen any other player really embrace that play style. Although Savic has been doing well with it, it's not something a lot of players have wanted to bring and haven't really practiced much with. All right, so it looks like a mid-range pally so far. A very standard mid-range pally. Well, there's the zombie tron. So a good Hard one. Do you drop. find the Anoyo tron? Oh wow, this is a god draw here for Reynad to deal with a mech shaman. It's not gonna get any better. I think so. You don't even want to coin out a Noyotron, but you yeah, have you to. <laughs> this is horrible. I don't know what to, what do you do here in this situation. And he's gonna be de exasperated when he sees the follow-ups. Reyna is going to have a huge edge on this early game. Power Mace. Well, that will be useful, but not now. Yeah, and now RD wishes he'd kept the coin for the Power Mace, because that, that coin on the Inoichuan achieved nothing. Playing the Zapomatic here does nothing. So Hero Power? I think it's a totem play. What you else? can't play Crackle because you, you, you have to play the weapon turn free. Mm -hmm. And you have to keep the uh, a, a, at least one mech in your hand after you attack twice with the Paw Mace. So, so are you thinking of taking that shield off? And I think that's better than going for the one damage to face. Yeah, because, because then you can your power kill mace. with your Paw Mace. Yeah. yeah, I like that line of play from RDU. Well, more minions to deal with. So he really needs to find a lightning storm soon, I think. I mean, if he even plays one, we haven't seen a storm so far. I don't I think, think the shaman's we saw dead. one. Was there? I'm not sure, but I think there was one. I know Gara played one useless one against a single minion. All right, so there is that... a fell reaver though, and no Aldor peacekeeper in Reynad's hand. <laughs> Peacekeepering a fell reaver is just hilarious. Yeah, you win the game right away. RDU, I don't know if he'll be willing to play into that, since it's so risky. I guess Zapomatic plus Crackle isn't too bad. But it, it dies so easily. Why not pile the treasure? Now you test for Aldor, perhaps, by doing so. And now if there is an Aldor, you can, if, if there is one, you can play the Fell Reaver and see what your opponent does with it. It's still a really bad situation for RDU. Yeah, it hasn't improved much, but it might just... Ooze. That's one of the worst cards, but it's at least something. The only worst card is... Um... Captain Spirit? No, Captain Spirit and Novice Engineer. Wait, 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 wait. You can, like, get your Novice Engineer like, in your hand and play it for the card draw. And with Captain Sparrow, you can do nothing most of the time. Does Reynad find the Aldor? No, he does nope. not. But the Harrison Jones will be useful with the second power mace or Doomhammer. With Doomhammer, it's going to be an auto win, honestly. If that eats up a Doomhammer, you pretty much win the game right away. So Lothar gets milled, loses Pyro tank, tank, and a and Fire Ellie. Okay, that's still not so bad. Yeah, those are not like the game-winning cars, but they are still very important. The thing is, RDU can now curve into his Fire Ellie very nicely. Rogue Biter weapon. That's nice, but I don't think you need it this turn. Unless you go for Zapomatic Crackle Kog'Maw's Rogue Biter. Man, this slime is a 1-8. Wow. That's nice. Yeah. It's like a nice... huge wall. Nice job, Belcher. To say the least. Is Reynad even worried about anything? I mean, he just punched face. You could even... Wait, reversing switch, 7, 8, 9, 10. He's really close to lethal if he goes for the reversing switch on Toshley. Like one of lethal, right? Yeah, he 7, can just 10, punch 14. face almost at that point. Unless he's worried about uh, Wind Fury plays, I guess. But hmm, No one plays Wind Fury in that. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, if he's worried about that one thing, then sure, but... 
I mean, you even can mail your opponent quite a bit by doing so. If you see good cards go away, you can feel a bit safer. Do you think... I, I think he will go all in on this play, to be honest. I think it makes too much sense. You, it makes sense because you saw one Neutron and that's the only card in RDU's, um, RDU's deck to Oh, the actually, second one you know, is gone too, yeah. Make him feel safe about it. And Reynard feel unsafe about it. So when he saw the second the second one being burned, I think you just go face with everything. Doomhammer's gone, Power Mace, Mace is gone, okay, and so Dr. Har Balance is gone. That Harrison makes no sense at all. <laughs> if RDU has Wind Fury though, he wins the game. I don't think that's likely. Yeah, but we uh, never know, right? It's yeah. like the one card that would change everything, but it is not there, unfortunately. Um, I don't think he's able to wipe this board and live. I don't think so either. Yeah, I don't think there's a way for him to do so. So let's assume he trades the Fire Alley away into the Toshley. Or Crackles, the I don't think he will. So he loses the game. Reynad is going to equalize the series 2-2. Two to two, And now he's going to be down to his Druid versus the Shaman. RDU's probably feeling okay about that. The thing is, if the Druid gets a good Innervate start with the Keeper of the Grove on something like a Whirling's Applematic, things go very wrong very fast for the Shaman. He needs to have a Shredder on the back end. It's just that... Innervate is such a game winner in this matchup if you can establish any type of board it's contest code ups. It's like, you know, the staple card of Druids winning games. Innervate. Yeah. So, do you know that good tech card the Druids are playing that, you know, are the, the one that adds two points of mana? Yeah, that one. Yeah. Really good tech card against every deck ever. So, a yeah, very, very strong card in general. But against Shaman, if they play Whirling's Applematic and you keep her at. It's kind of like keepering a knife juggler against Zoo. Yeah, it's, it's the same. It's pretty much the, the, the exact with, same. The problem against Zoo is um, the fact that he can replenish his hands pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. so it's not not it's not a hu huge deal for the Zoo player to lose a minion for the um, for the keeper, but on the, for the shaman, it's really crucial because your draws will be uh, m much more valuable. You have to get much more value from the draws uh, against Droid with the Shaman yeah. than with the Warlock. Right. War Warlock is able to get, you know, infinite replenishment for, for his hand, which I think yeah. w is why Power Mace is so strong in the Shaman deck, because it allows you to squeeze out more value out of cards that you are playing by default. So it's tacking yeah. on removal plus a Power of the Wild. Um, exactly. On, Mark of the Wild, sorry, on one of your minions whenever necessary. All right, so Shaman hmm. versus Druid. Well, it's gonna be an interesting one. Reynard didn't keep the big game hunter. What do you think about that? Would you keep the BGH big game is hunter? only? Uh, it's useful against Fire Ellie with Flame Tongue. No, oh, it's man. useful against Fell Reavers. Uh, yeah, he does know that there's Fell Reavers in there. You know what? I, I don't know why. You wouldn't keep them. Well, if you keep Big Game Hunter, it's only against two cards of your opponent's deck. So maybe it's not worth it. Yeah, maybe it's not worth it for him. So Wrath is found off the top for Reynad, killing That's the next That's really, Wolver. really, really huge. Yeah, but the thing is, RDU's got a really good Zapomatic. So now that he's seen one Wrath, he's not expecting this one to go anywhere. What about Savage Roar now? Do you use it? What do you think your opponent will do with that Zapomatic? Hit you for six, that's the most. Yeah, well, you, hit you, you for just... six sounds good, man. <laughs> <laughs> you mean a two drought that hits for six? Okay, yeah, you're right. I was going to say play Shade and swipe after, but that's a bit too slow, perhaps. Oh, wow. Yeah, you can't delay that, uh, that spider tank. It's too good. Yeah, and now Reynard has to swipe it. This is going to be a one card for one card for the longest time. And that well, Paladin that's... Shredder is going to be annoying. Oh my Hangful goodness. Yeti. Look at that next turn. Mecha next Mech Warfare Mechanical insane. Yeti. Yeah. And to turn six, Fire Ellie. Look at that curve for RDU. Look at RDU's curves. Would, would you drop the Paladin Shredder or the Yeti? Here, I'd probably play the Shredder first. But why? 
I don't know, just to me to make sure the removal doesn't come in handy. If he plays Keeper of the Grove, I can take it away. If he just plays it for a body, okay. So incentivize <laughs> the for, trades. Sorry for interrupting you, but Reyna just attack the face of the Yeti for one. Yeah, sets up a swipe, a really, Second really predictable one. swipe. So I don't, I don't, uh, I don't exactly agree with that. You have... Sometimes you, he does that a lot, by the way. It's a play that he's made countless times. Going for the swipe, like ping phase and set up a swipe. Because it basically means that you will only kill one creature. Anyway. Oh, he's gonna go for force of nature here. Force of nature? What? And Savijor? He finds the taunt. How much is that worth? When you use the nutrient, not much. <laughs> yes, it's worth a lot. It's worth a whole lot. All right, so Fire Elemental is going to get great value here for RDU. He's going to be able to take out the Shade and keep applying pressure. Oh, wow. Oh, he finds wow. the second one. Rain as in the <laughs> And next turn, this. he can power it up with Rogue Biter or the armored part for the whatever drops from the Palter Trailer. This is great. Well, we'll see uh, the Doctor 7 now. It's that or swipe hero power down the fire alley if you don't want to take too much more, but this is so wonky because it's a play that delays the lethal, but it doesn't guarantee you're going to be able to win at any point. Yeah, I think you have to go with the Dr. Boom. And hope that your opponent has whiffed on his lethal? Yeah. Okay, well, we'll see what he does. There's 10 on board right now, so... Or you can drop the Emperor with the Don't. Rusty Horn part. Yeah, taunt up Emperor. It already has taunt though by default. <laughs> Just not in this situation. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I wanted to <laughs> Just say. Just not right here. All right, he is gonna go for the Emperor. Is he? No, he's not. He's bluffing us. Raynad, showing the casters since 2015. Not a long time. Since 2014. Raynad, no wait. Raynad trolling the caster since he invented Hearthstone. So 2013. Something like that. And he goes for the boom. So 6, 10, 13, a high... No, it's lethal. It's lethal, no matter what. It doesn't matter. They're like, no matter what is done well, here I'm by Raynad. I'm thinking that Crackle has <laughs> minimum two. I don't know, man. Uh, I don't know, because Lightning Storm does. That's probably the reference you, you've got. But this is exact lethal for RDU with Rockbiter. Possibly overkill with Crackle, but he won't roll the dice. I was just going to go face right here. Bam. Well, Reynad loses that one, and RD is going to take the series 3-2. to two. This is sort of the outcome we expected when we picked up, uh, we talked about Mech Mage. Uh, I mean Mech Shaman, sorry, versus Druid. Mm -hmm. Shaman was favored. Every type of Shaman has a generally okay matchup versus Druid. That's uh, very and true. this is no difference. And I think this one even has better chances than the usual Shaman. Because yep. it's faster. So if you drop double Mech Warper into full board of Mechs, you basically win. Yeah, you can get a really sick start. Zoo-like, right? Yeah, exactly. And uh, uh, if you get Fell Reavers and your opponent doesn't have Big Game Hunter, you also win. Yeah, it's like, it's kind of uh, the cherry on the sundae, I guess, when you do get a double Mech War Pro, but you really don't need it. The Fell Reavers are good. They're going to be able to remove one, usually not two. And uh, the cards that you mill are very meaningful in other decks that are very slow. But in something like a Mech Shaman, that drawback doesn't exist nearly as much. Since anyway, you're unlikely to draw your entire deck. So yeah, the, yeah, this the will Shaman draws the like the Shaman will draw like ten cards for the whole game. Yeah, he'll top deck for forever unless he finds Manatite or Joe Drake most yeah. of the time, right? So RD is going to be going up. Uh, actually, Raynat is in RDU's old position. He's two, two four. to four, and yes. RDU is three four in the in the entire event. So. Um, he could still go up to 5-4. Oh, no, 4-4 four, four, since Masan has been dropped out of the group, no, right? Are the use it from the Horde group, I think? The Horde group? Okay, because if he's from check. Horde, he could get 5-4. Let me which check. Is, Ranking, uh, RDU is from group Horde. Yes. All right. So, so he'll so have RDU still more go. matches. Yeah. He can Horde still go 5-4. Yeah, Horde will start, but he can redeem his, himself. That's true. Definitely. All right, so we'll be right back. We'll have uh, two more matches. Both of them will contain a fire bat from Team Archon. The first one is going to be versus Savich, and there are going to be amazing matches. Fire bat versus Savich, and then we're going to have fire bat versus Strive Crow. So we're going to see even more high level action. Those players are top of the line players in the Hearthstone scene. So those matches should be kind of nice. So Kingwin Pro League will keep going. Don't go anywhere. Ten minutes break, and we'll be right back. That's